Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. Now, you may be thinking, huh, the footage looks slightly different. What, is he always playing dual blades? No, of course, this is not my footage. So for those of you who saw uh, my video where I was kind of struggling a little bit with Conqueror's Blade, one thing I mentioned was that if you've got any really good gameplay or some really good footage that you want to submit, get in touch with me on Discord and send me a link. And Tinjev was one of the people who did that and sent me this awesome Dual Blades game. So I thought that's what we would be checking out today. He has actually got a YouTube channel of his own, so I'll put a link to that in the description down below. So do go and check him out for some other gameplay. And uh, yeah, let's see how he's going to be getting on with the Dual Blades. So initially, just trying to go against this Pike who's kind of overextended a little bit. Probably quite a bold move to be going hard against a Dual Blade in the opening parts of a game. Looks like he's going to jump down. Tinjev is not going to give up though, he's going for him, he's gone for him, oh, and there we go, there is the first kill of the match, ooh, looks like a, looks like a low health spear there, could be an easy kill, could be an easy kill, there we go, he gets him, and that is the second kill. Now remember with dual blades, if they're using the, uh, the suitable rune, every time they get a kill they're getting plus 4% uh, to their slashing damage, and that stacks up to 5 times whilst they're still alive. So because he's now had two kills, that's 8% increased slashing damage. So you can see how they want to keep themselves alive because it increases their damage, giving them buffs. And that was not a bad little start for the B-point defense. You know, no real, well, he's only brought Martillatory, so no units to actually lose. Two easy free hero kills, and actually a fair bit of delaying them and holding them up from their push on the B-point. They're still going, he's still got some of his teammates by the looks of it trying to get shots in on the bridge. And from what we've seen so far, Tinjev mostly focusing just on hero kills, not really using uh, his dual blade to really do any damage to units, which I guess is kind of what the class is all about. It's not really about unit damage. Or he goes invisible. I think they get invisibility when they jump off the horse. That's why you see him using his horse a lot to then get that dismount. Looking around, hoping I think he's hoping for some friendly units turning up. Got some friendly axe raiders coming in from the back. He looks like he's looking for his uh, opportunity to pounce on some of these enemy heroes. Ooh, is he going to make his move? Is he going to go for the pole axe? He is. Is he in? Get some damage in. Goes on for the ultimate. Locks him in place. Oh, look at the damage. The burst damage is just so intense. Dual blades are so powerful in the right situation. I've actually never really played dual blade myself. I think I probably... Oh, he's got him on this heel. Oh, no. He interrupted the poor man's heel. Harsh. Is he going to get away? Yeah, looks like it. The Polax is making a run for it. Understandable. He's now got a 60 second cooldown before his bandage comes back off. Trying to get on on the short sword. Got to remember though, he is extremely fragile. Oh, this short sword doing a good job of keeping him pinned down. Looks like he's got him now though. And there we go. In for kill number three. It looks like they managed to hold the B point, which is good. Nice job team. So yeah, never played dual blades. Don't know why. Never a class that's really appealed to me. Although as Tinjev is showing hills and all now, can be extremely dominant in the right hands. I feel like it's one of those classes that can be very good. Oh, we, oh, we got that Polaxe! That was the Polaxe that jumped down earlier. I think his second heal had just come off cooldown when he got killed. <laughs> That's almost bullying. Cyberbullying, that poor Polaxe. <laughs> yeah, it's um one of those classes that I think veteran players can do extremely well with once you've got all the right equipment the right stats and you know what you're doing but newer players or players like me who aren't start necessarily very good really kind of struggle to make classes like this work because it is super fragile looks like the enemy are stacking up quite heavily on that siege tower going over the ping letting the team know is he going to make a defense he's not got a unit with him at the moment so he's only really going to be able to target enemy heroes Oh, ho, ho, ho. that shows just how fragile those dual blades is. He just got clipped by a charge from a pike militia. And so that's a pike militia that's obviously got a charge doctrine on it. And a charge on those pike militias with the charge doctrines is pretty crap. If that had been something like prefecture pikes, that would have been KO for certain. So it just shows how fragile these dual blades are. If I was in like my heavy armor poleaxe, I would barely even feel that as a charge. So it is a little bit of a glass cannon, this glass. You can see... Oh, Clips by a bit of a trebuchet. 
kind of limited to what it can do in these sort of situations, I guess. It's just waiting for those hero killing opportunities. In these kind of pitched battles where it's just two units, you know, throwing themselves against each other, kind of tough for Tinjev to get involved because he's so fragile. If he goes on that front line too much, he'll just get so much damage from the enemy guns at the back, the enemy units, and any enemy heroes. Ooh, more trebs coming in. So I suppose that's one of the limitations, whereas if I was here now with my Polax, I'd be right on the front line, probably get it myself killed, but <laughs> at least taking a few units with me. Had a little bit of a little bit of a stab at the short sword, but not enough to get through. Got some stuff starting to stack up on the other side now. We're going to be pressured on A from two sides. Who is he going to try and get round? We've got some friendly troops coming in. He's seen an opportunity. He's getting. He didn't get the kill on the Nadachi. Going in on the short sword, trying to get some damage in. Is he going to get the kill? No, not quite. Backing off slightly. It looks like they've managed to hold that side of the siege tower. Oh, some cap going on with the C point. Is he going to pull back to defend that or try and hold R on A? No, Tinjev's going to pull back to C by the looks of it. He could do with some health. Some health back. <laughs> uh, what have we got? Some friendly units, some friendly stalwarts coming. Some friendly. Or even some enemy stalwarts coming down from the B point. And chasing a poor little spear who's running for his absolute life. Can you blame him? Is Tinjev going to take this opportunity to go back and get some more units from the supply point? I think he is. I think he is. Yep, he has grabbed himself some Outriders. He's going for the full Meta Warrior Jawblade with Outriders. <laughs> outriders are such a dominant cavalry unit in the game at the moment. For a tier 3 unit and for their leadership cost, they could just do so much damage. They're such an effective unit. Looks like the... Oh, the team has just lost the A point. Lost a little bit of cap already on the C point from that guy who managed to sneak around the back. But I think too bad. So, looks like he's just looking for his opportunity. Where's he going to go? Pulling the unit back into the centre. The enemy aren't really down properly from the A point yet, so they're not really started a push. We actually lost a couple of his outriders there to that short sword. Well played. Oh, nice interruption from that short sword. Oh, is he actually getting him down? Is he going to be... Is he going to get him? Oh, no. Oh, saved partially by his unit there. That short sword did a really good job of seeing him coming. He spotted him in his invisibility. Used his count and knocked him on his floor and then tried to CC him and keep him down. Quite lucky to have his unit with him there to help him get back in the fight. Nicely played. So that's four kills, I think, now? Four stacks of slashing damage increase. Quite potent. He's just going to get a few, a few javelin throws in with his unit. Yep, against the shields. Not tremendously effective against a unit of shields like that. Although you can see how many javelins they actually toss in. Picking up a couple of unit kills. Going for the explosive bolts. Oh, picking up a few more. Getting some damage on. Looks like the enemy team is thinking about going for that supply point. Not yet made a push on there, though. Charging with a with a few stray claymores. <laughs> well, a few ex-stray claymores. I think they're thoroughly dead now. He's about out of javelins, though, so he's going to have to pull back to that supply point. Is he going to go around the corner and get some throws in? He looks like he's thinking about it. Looks like he's thinking about it. But mostly just into those Imperial Shields. Quite nicely, I think we're seeing a bit of an increase in the number of Imperial Shields in the game recently. Oh, as there is now more of them setting up on the sea point. Looks like the enemy's starting to get a little bit of momentum going. You can see how these guys just wreck these enemy infantry units. It's picking up kills, picking up damage all the time. Walking them through the remnants of the enemy unit. Oh, we've got some Palace Guards charging in. Oh no, they're Iron Caps, so not Palace Guards. He's going in, he's gone on with the two ability just to go absolutely ham into the middle of them. Continuing to use his javelins. He's up to 30, 30 unit kills with these outriders already. Is he going to be able to hunt down a kill? He's trying to go for the short sword. Trying to get the stabs in. Will he get him around the back? Oh, didn't get the kill, just an assist. Okay, is he going to pull back his outriders to the supply point? They could do with some healing and some ammo by the looks of it. Although, I don't know, has the enemy captured supply? Oh, interesting moment. Not often do the enemy team manage to actually gap the cap on the supply before they cap the sea point. Well, it looks like there's a fair bit of friendly stuff turning up. Maybe this will be, be enough to break through. Got some friendly Iron Reapers on here. He's on the prowl. He's gone for the pike. Pike is down. Will he get the dual blades as well? Oh, only the assist, but still, good amount of damage. And those cavalry just absolutely flattened those poor Imperial shields. Goes for his ultimate on the longsword. Gets the assist on there as well. 
really starts to clear up. And it looks like they're going to be... Oh, 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 just missed. Get him. Oh, just got him. And then just got taken out by the short sword. Nice. <laughs> But that does I mean his extra slashing damage is going to go back down to zero because it's reset now that he dies. So we have respawned with the Imperial Javelins. In the time that Tinchev got himself killed though, they have lost the sea point. So the enemy is now starting to set up, trying to get themselves ready to push on the base. Well, that was a, a cheeky little backslash from that short sword. <laughs> Ris risky game always going for, uh, for some Imperial Javelins like that. What have we got? We have got... Wait for the throw! Oh, brutal, brutal. <laughs> Locks him in place with the jewel lades. And then an absolute face full of javelins. <laughs> so, so damaging. These Imperial javelins are so brutal. Oh, I'm not quite sure what those muskets were thinking. That was a that was a bit of a mistake on their part. Came up. Oh, we've got some hussars behind him, though. Oh, they're doing a lot of damage to his javelins. Is he going to try and get in with the unit? He's trying to get there, trying to get the unit back to supply. Actually lost... Quite a few of them there to those hussars. Quite a damaging little charge. And there's some Iron Reapers following up behind. Looks like he's thinking about this pole axe. Goes for the lunge. Misses the first hit. Gets in from behind. I think he's probably conscious of those guns behind him. Because they will do super damage to him. Yeah, look how much damage he takes when he gets hit by one of those enemy musket units. It is pretty intense. Pretty intense. Looks like he's going to be going for the Keshigs. Kind of surprised in a way that Keshigs kind of fallen out a little bit as a meta unit. A lot more people using things like cataphracts now. But kind of interesting to see Keshig's still in use. Where is he going to go? Is he going to try and go for a bit of a bit of a flanky McFlank flank? I think he is. I think he is. Quite a lot of enemy stuff on the point there. He's going to come in from the side by the looks of it. He's just going to go straight for the charge. Oh, it's a nice charge. I don't think he got interrupted. Oh, he picked up 20, 30 kills there pretty quickly. He's gone on with the extra damage. One hero kill. Nice, nice, nice. Is he going to get the second one? Oh, there's the second one. Oh, oh, oh those Keshigs actually got quite a few of them out. There's the third hero kill. <laughs> oh, God. Is he going to be able to make it four? No, he's getting out there. Oh, that short sword just got him pinned down. You can see just how much of a glass cannon he is. He's going to do so much damage, but he's so fragile to things that don't normally worry me. It's quite interesting to see, actually, as a, someone who normally plays heavy arm, although... Admittedly, I am playing the Dachi at the moment, but traditionally I'm a heavy armor user. Things like those short sword slams on the ground, they don't really do much damage generally, in my opinion. They're great amounts of CC, makes it effective for the CC it does, but not that effective against the heavy armor for pure damage. But it's interesting to see how much damage it does against the jewel blades. Respawned back in with his Imperial Javelins. Uh, obviously, a good chunk of the unit got killed a little bit early on, but there's still enough left to have a little bit of a fight over. And looks like the team's trying to push out a little bit from the final base. He's trying to get some throws in. Oh, gets a kill. Nice. Is that more going to be in trouble? I would have thought so. He is. He's down. Goodness, picking up two kills straight from the off. Gets another assist. They're all just throwing themselves into this melee, the group of enemy heroes. I don't know if the enemy's maybe starting to run out of units. Oh, it's getting lockabed badly by the enemy Polax there. Oh, that's painful. Leaves him on about 10% health. Looks like he's got the uh, healing bandage rune that allows him to move and heal. Which I can see how that would be super useful for a dual blade. Not a rune that I normally use myself on any of my classes. Oh, goes in for the hunt on the Polax. Just an assist though. Looks like he's hunting for his next opportunity as the enemy's still putting quite a bit of pressure on this final base point. A few enemy heroes still running around, trying to get in. He's dangerously low on health. He's got to be careful, though. <laughs> that Polax was after him then. One hit, and I think it might have been KO, but he managed to hop his way along the wall and get out of it. That short sword looks like he's in trouble. He is in trouble. Is he going to get him kill? Is he going to get the kill? Oh, just an assist. God, we must have so many assists by now. Although... Quite a few hero kills as well, to be honest. Looks like he's continuing to kind of mop up some of these enemies. These shields on point doing a good job of just blocking up. Some enemy condos charging in from the other side. Looks like he's going to go back, maybe grab the rest of his Keshigs since he lost the rest of his javelins. Not leashing the Keshigs. He's out and about on the hunt. Is he just going to come up and just probably throw them straight into the... Enemy blobs on the base point. Ooh, some nice juicy guns there at the back. Goes in, goes on with the two ability. Oh, grabs the kill on the pole axe. Nice, nice, nice. 
Oh, oh, and a second poleaxe. Oh, he's a little bit low on health. Oh, just dodges the spear. <laughs> oh, that ball spear guy. Basically lunged in every direction but the right one. Oh, even picked up another hero kill with the Keshigs. <laughs> and it takes him just to 100 unit kills. Nice job. I've even kind of lost count at this point how many hero kills we're up to. I think we're most certainly above 10. This is just going around finishing people off on the point now. This poor little musket. <laughs> Chased away by about 20 units of cav and some heroes. I think it was rapidly going to be curtains for him and it was. This is Polak's going to be able to get out of the way. Can he escape in time? They've just got to try and live now. I think the enemy team... <laughs> Jesus, it does damage so quickly. The burst on this dual blade is just absolutely insane. Looks like the enemy team is pretty much completely out of units though now. They're not going to be really getting anywhere from here. I think it's just a mop up. Can, can Tinja pick up any extra jab kills before the end? Oh, there we go. Nice. Another one to add to the tally. It's just going round. The burst damage. It's just crazy. So, so high. Oh, looks like someone up here who might be able to get a few little extra kills on. A pole axe somewhere in the middle. He hasn't got much health though. He does need to be vaguely careful. One locker burn, he'll be trouble. Oh, like that. That is the risk of the dual blades. It is so fragile. One little locker burn strike can spell curtains. But dead or not, it did not matter as their team went on to secure victory. Nice. Let's go and have a little, little, little bit of a look at the stat page. Looks like he managed to grab himself a whopping 19 hero kills. You certainly can't complain at that. And it's no small feat. A nice little 100 unit kills as well to go with it. Not even worthy of an MVP. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I would be interested in hearing your thoughts on kind of this new format. If you've got any clips to submit or if you enjoy this sort of format, do let me know in the comments. And yeah, do get in touch on Discord if you've got any good clips to submit. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and I shall see you all on the next one.